survivor and um, this lovely lady has accepted me in her post uh, <laughs> she's also on my group and I want to say thank you for the encouragement that you're giving to other people I want to make sure that I make your day today too check your inbox please because I would like to help you along the way of what you want to do and network with you because we can't do this alone. None of us can do this alone. I mean, you're a very new baby group and I hope that the message that I have heard this morning within your video, this afternoon, should I say, within your video reaches people and understand, they understand that the reason why we do videos like this is to raise awareness. The reason why we do videos like this is to say that you are not alone. I'm gonna help where I can help and I have many, many videos that I have done to help people, many interviews with people. Um, I get to the heart and the core of the incidents and the emotion. And I'm going to make sure that I help where I can, as much as I can. Yes, you can see there's diversity within me, but I am a human being and my words of wisdom are not gonna go out wasted, they're not. Simply because I have seen and I work alongside people that they're, we're honest. Hello, hello, I'm gonna wait. <laughs> I work alongside people that are honest, um, show empathy and compassion and understanding and also those people that are living with alongside with mental Ill health, I hate the word. Um, all these labels that we have, I hate the word. But what I've noticed, if we're in, his, in this group to raise awareness, then why the secret? because I understand that people don't like to tell people that they've got mental health or to show people that they've got mental health. But when you have a private group, hello babe, I'm trying to call, contact you. Um, I've tried to call you. When you have a private group, I should continue. It doesn't share awareness, it keeps it contained. It doesn't help get your message out there. So unless you're, you know, and what's the secret? Secrets got us here in the first place. That's why we're blinked and depressed and that's why half of us self-harm. Secrets. We have to manage to unmaster those secrets and decide to claim our space, claim our identity and definitely, definitely claim our voices. And those voices can't go unnoticed when raising awareness. And that's why I raise awareness publicly and make sure that people learn to not keep secrets. Because your friends, your family, your loved ones, your colleagues, even your employees, they need to know you're fragile, but you are human. And what you're asking for is respect. Just because we have these labels, mental health, doesn't make us mental. What it shows is that we have been abused. What it shows is that people have been mean and they don't know how to handle their mannerism. So I say those that do their mannerism the way they do and inflict pain on others, I beg to differ. I would say everything is learned behavior and if we can be cruel then we must address our own mentality so on the mental side of things first point of cruel is first do no harm and that goes to anyone with or without a label i beg to differ that there is a difference between me and uh people that are well how, how can i put this let me put this in a better way that makes more common sense more common sense. Many people will shy away from that word mental health. Many people will say known by association because somebody's got mental health, they're crazy. They're not crazy, they're not, they're just unheard. And what, they're, what, what happens here is that people just don't have the time to understand, get to know or actually feel what that journey of that, what we've been through. Some of you are very young and, and if I can prevent many of you from and I can take 10 or 20 years of pain and self-harm off you by installing some faith and hope and some direction into you, excuse me, then I will. This is a new awakening. I think there's a lot of people waking up uh, with what I do in my project. It isn't about me. I will never make it about me. Although I use my I breathe life, I breathe life into other people because I'm trying to prevent suicide and trying to bring a community together. So when you are new in a baby group, <laughs> I want to I just I think it's amazing what you're doing. Um haven't seen 
you completely and um it takes one to know one and this is the thing there's no explanation needed when you have lived it none but what we have to teach is kindness around us and that means going to our family our friends and saying Do you know what your behavior is one of which is, is, is a little bit, I, I can't communicate with you. Let's find a, an efficient way to communicate with you because we have different love languages, different needs, different examples been set to us all and different people around us that have been telling us what we can and what we can't do. When we seek our friends for permission, do I look all right? Why are you asking them for validation? You, of course you're asking them for validation do you look all right because you like the compliment because it boosts your ego it helps you it makes you it confirms that you make right choices and right decisions for yourself even though you are the ultimate one that has to make the choice and the decision but it, things have to sit comfortable for you oh i shall go down the river today and do a live of the repercussions also of doing groups Doing groups and having mental health, it's an added pressure. It's a release, it's great to offload, it's a good platform to offload, but you have to monitor those posts. Everything that comes through, you have to monitor. Every video, you can't even just accept the video. I'm, I'm being honest with you. You cannot just accept a video on on your platforms without monitoring those platforms, um, the video, sorry, without looking what the content is, looking what they're promoting, I have to make sure that I watch everyone's video before I can even put it on my page, just in case they're promoting the method, which is a no-no on my group. We do not promote the method. We do not want to see the things that we saw that installed those methods into our head. So if there's any newspaper articles that says how someone died, we don't want that. The simple word is suicide and it's preventable. So when we put images out there and words out there, we've learned that. We put then subliminal, that's the word, subliminal messages in our minds. And when we are low, and when we are at a point where we feel hopeless, those messages and those images are in our head already. So it makes it very accessible to find a method. So therefore, I do not promote the method on, um, I say the word self-harm, self mutilating whatever but i do not promote the method and how you try to do something to yourself <clears throat> it's very silly it's very simple um to stick to those rules for me and monitor my post the way i have to because i'm having to teach people that we learn all of this like like people that are promiscuous and do things that they may perhaps don't want to do things because they learned it from a bloody video or tv or something like that you are what you see but we have to unlearn all those things that we've seen. We have to untrain those things that we have seen. And that's what suicide prevention is about. That's what tackling, and when I have to say, when I mention my word suicide, people want to run a mile and treat you like a leper. But I say, let me break it down. Suicide prevention, tackling the underlying issues. And those underlying issues could be very simple. Child abuse. Hey, hands up. It happened to me. Domestic violence. Hey, hands up. It happened to me. Homelessness. Hey, hands up. Happened to me. Discrimination. Hey, hands up. Happened to me. Am I ticking any boxes yet to you? Infidelity. Hands up. Happened to me. Cheaters. Happened to me. Am I ticking these boxes? The way of the world and how people interact with each other is perfectly normal and admirable. <laughs> you don't have to have mental health to turn around and create someone's mental health. This is the problem that we have and I want people to understand, darlings, that I am not my label and I am fed up of people saying, yeah, is your friend all right? She's got mental health. Why don't you say, is your friend all right? What happened? Because that's the problem. What happened to create the mental health? Do you see what I'm saying? What happened? Don't look at the label mental health. Look at the emotion. What caused the emotion? That's what I'm asking people to look at. Because what they're doing, judging us people with labels and diagnoses, is 
the stigma attached to that stinks and it needs to be broken. Okay? Because look at your parents and look at your mothers. Maybe they have not turned around and been diagnosed with mental ill health. But look at the curse on our families. Look at it. Look at it. Look at the domestic violence, if that's in your family or circle, whatever. But look at the depression that runs and the alcoholism that goes around. And many of them people may not even have a diagnosis. But because it's the behaviour problems and the substance abuse and the, uh, the manipulation and, and bad behaviour that hurts other people. That, just because it's not been diagnosed, like ours have been diagnosed, it's still to say that you have learnt behaviour. You know, so this learned behaviour from these people that don't have mental health and they come into you as a relationship and they come and cheat on you and they come and do things and teach you to do things that you don't want to do and tell you what to do and dress and where to go and, and you know, you become their object instead of a person. So, and that is even including your friends. They have expectations of you all the time. And what they're actually trying to say is be consistent. Because when you're not consistent in your friends or your loved one's life, then you leave an unbalance and an emptiness. So people have a requirement and what's expected. I suppose if you're friends or family, you need to know how many times do you want me to check in on you? I mean, I can do my best because when you are speaking to people on a daily basis and you're in, in any kind of line of work where it's taking your energy and taking you away from your family and friends, I think you do have to set a time or month and schedule that you will like check in at least once a month. But at the same time is if you're doing anything like mental health support or group or fitness, you do expect them to back you up with the things that you're doing. So maybe they can take something out of it with the things that you're doing. Lisa, well done to you. I feel you, I hear you. Well done to you, but know that be very careful. It doesn't suck your energy. Um, be very careful for you are dealing with mental health and you are dealing with behaviour problems. This you know. And I read your post that you are still in counselling. And the best counselling that you can possibly do is keep talking, honey. Keep talking. Because no counsellor in the world is going to do anything but you. Everything that you do, it's nice to talk. It's nice for somebody to listen. But you ultimately have to take those actions and continue to apply. And what you're doing when you breathe life and start these groups that you're doing, when you're breathing life in, into other people, you're actually putting life back into you. You feel useful. A part of something and a part of the community, but know that you'll never be able to do this alone. You will take some rejections, you will take some knockbacks when you don't see your numbers go up. You will feel Especially when you're dealing with emotional, when you're dealing with these emotions, and my label, my label, my lovies, is emotionally unstable personality disorder, EUPD. Oh gosh, isn't that very same as BPD? Isn't it the same as very similar to bipolar without the voices? You know, it's it's a uh, it's you no. Know, they do say when I come into this situation now of growth. And I'm in ownership of my life. <laughs> Thank you. When I'm in ownership of my life, I'm in full control of my surroundings, the actions that I take, the thoughts I visualise. Don't worry about everybody else and the numbers that are going up on these, um, in the lives, because that's when you're doing a live and you look at the numbers, you think, oh, there's only one person watching. How is that going to help? But it's all it takes is one person to listen. One person to click on. You know what? I like that. I'm going to follow that. Now, on the Mom Project, which you are a part of, there is um, so much that you can have on the Mom to help you along the way. And that is where we like to support where we can. I have, let's see. flyers which is always um i'm going to show you something in a minute uh, i have flyers 
And in these flyers, it says, here are some of the behaviours and signs to look out for. Behaviour, appearance, lifestyle, substance abuse, isolation, self-harm, communication, good one, that one, and neglect. Desperate, angry, guilty, worthless, lonely, sad, hopeless, and helpless. If you want more information, you can find that on www.momproject.com co.uk now we offer advocacy for those people that are struggling um for all the things that i've gone through in my life i had to make sure i'm gonna get some battery that's for sure um i had to make sure that i provided a lifeline for the failings of the system <laughs> when that system failed me i had to provide a lifeline ah, i'm looking for a battery pack and that lifeline had to come in all the failings of the system. That means when people deal with police, which many people with mental health end up dealing with uh, the police quite frequently, because when you have a suicide attempt, you have to involve the authorities and then they have to multi-agency and safeguard you. What does that mean? Uh, to make sure that everyone is aware of your situation and where they can offer the help in the best possible way possible um come on kerry think battery pack um i have that okay charger thank you um so what's supposed to happen then is i apologize this is real talk isn't it this is honesty this is my time my uh and it's your time and I'm and thank you for giving me time to just talk to you and offer what I can possibly offer people and let you know that you are not alone. Ah, uh, I'm I'm here now, I have a battery pack. Whoop, whoop. Um one of the things that the services, the mental health services do and, and when you have a oh, let's go for this. When people start crushing it's not just go to your doctors, it's go to your mental health services. And when you do go to your mental health services, the NHS mental health services, it's a waiting list. And that waiting list is endless. And appointment, you can only get that appointment once a week, uh, maybe once a month. And it doesn't really help you go forward. You might say it helps some people, but it doesn't really help you iron out the problems and find solution and task setting on a regular basis. I mean, if I look at my old previous mental health uh, reports, which is called task setting, what they do is get you to write it down and say, T -t 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 get on with it, go on. And Sometimes we need people to hold our hands for this to make sure that we show up because the energy, you just tripped on the doormat. Are you okay? Okay. <laughs> Barbara, I hope you're okay. But when you did that trip, did you manage to send us all a postcard? <laughs> I have a humor. Oh, as long as you're okay. Um, it, you, you know, I, I feel... It's nice to come out of my group actually and come in here and actually just be me and just go, yeah, hey, I'm Kerry. And it's nice to meet each and every one of you. Um, bunch of nut nuts, you've got to be if you're on mental health. <laughs> you have to be affected by it somehow. Um, you know, so that's my mum. Oh, it's your mum, you must be, see? How beautiful is that when you've got your parents or someone behind you backing you up or your loved ones backing you up with what you're doing because they've seen it they've been affected by it and pros probably contributed to some of it but and i have to be honest i learned my behavior from my mother and my father that i took a little bit of their lifestyle a little bit of their lifestyle and i applied it to mine and it was fun but that fun brought thunder and it bought alcohol and it bought drugs and it bought promiscuity and it bought a whole heap of garbage with that that made me feel and lose my identity into trying to keep everybody happy supplying all their needs 
when deep down all I was doing is putting a fake smile on from the relationships that I had but they they warm to me because they think oh she's a wonderful woman they take so much out of me and then they suck it out of me and cheat I haven't found a man that ain't cheated on me yet Mustering out the mental health services, mustering out what the organisations do to you. Oh my God, I haven't found an organisation that actually, well, actually, they, you see, we're behind every organisation you have beautiful people and you have people that just follow. You need leaders and we're not talking about leadership where it's just simply about them. We're talking about leadership to lead the way in, in what it's like to be a human being and what it's like to... Um, I wish I could share this into my group, but I can't. But I can download it. It's okay. What it, what it's like to be a human being and and teaching these services. It's funny because I am a service now. Um, I'm just carry though. It's it, but I had to wait. I had to tick the T's because when I didn't tick the dots and I wanted to help people, they the, the other services. They say, "Who is she? <laughs> Who is she? Shut the door." And and it, ha and it just shuts the door on the person that's trying to get their voice on over as well. So sometimes to come in unity with somebody is to thank you. So, and the bra showing, isn't it? <laughs> sometimes to come in the uh, unity with um, someone is is good. So what I do, I have with my clients. I mean, because of my lived experience, I am so going to give them the 100%. And I've had people on my books for two years because the system likes to mess about with people's emotions and you're just paper shuffling shuffling paperwork what group the mom project mental health awareness real talk i put a link in here um it's already in here and there's a video in here as well that lisa has put in here um uh, and uh roxanne woodhouse singing uh and then i've got plenty of material where the uh voices of the survivors are projecting and they represent mom mom you can't i can't represent kerry kerry's kerry's just kerry kerry will leave a legacy no matter what i'm representing what our survivors are doing and that is mind over matter it's survivors i cannot sit here and say when i have a platform that um it's about me because we're really personal and we have to offload so everybody that comes on to mom has to be sponsored by mom so if you're part of the mom project you've already got that sponsorship do you understand because you're supporting what we're doing raising awareness changing lives giving um networking and providing employment providing advocacy where if somebody has a housing problem we have that too if somebody has crime and criminal behavior cyberbullying and all of those things we have that too so Where, and I got smart because, like I said, a lot of people, they have companies, like, let's take Mind, and I'm not going to discredit Mind, but Mind did Mind me up, yeah? So I'm not going to discredit Mind for the individuals that run the companies fantastically, um, but you get certain workers, support workers, that just let down the team. So it doesn't become a team when you're dealing with support workers. It becomes about I. And so you put your trust in people and they can let you down. Now, I had support workers that let me down. I had support workers that breached my data. You know, I had all of that. And because I know that and the system failed me terribly for when I was in, um, being a victim of crime. Um, in the end, I got compensation and thank you and, and sorry letters. So I was never going to let that go. I think you get to a limit and a point in life where you say, right, that's it. No more abuse from nobody. Because I deserve a right to be here in life. So you say no more. No more. If you're drinking around me like, and you're doing all of that, well, you've got to ask yourself, why are you hanging around me? Drink, 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 drink. Drink is another thing. It's why your friends are hanging around you. Are you part of their drinking buddies? But when it all go tits up, they're off on their own. But, you know, it's picking your network and picking your team good. People that's going to push you out good. People that, people that are going to be delicate with people's emotions and understand. And don't just sit there and taking things from people. You've got to always give back. And when people don't share your work, it will leave you disappointed. Because what you're saying is, look, I'm not giving you the messages for me. 
I'm giving you the messages so you can make a difference out in the community and save someone's life. How you save their life is by communicating and recognizing and understanding that the need to recognize an emotion on someone's face, an emotion within their text messages. And, you know, it's you put it easy. Only when you've lived it and start to claim ownership and recover um, where you see people's imperfections. So we all try to perfect our life and get it right. And it takes some mastering and living with the um, trauma. You see, I'm, I'm going to change the word, which the normal people will say mental health. And I mean that because it represents mental health. We all have it, don't they say? We all have it. So that's how people go, oh, blase about it. They're so blase about it just to say we all have it. We have different levels of emotions, but it becomes mental illness if it's not taken care of, if problems are not taken care of. I have people that want to um, commit suicide over a bloody bailiff. Oh, we beat them too. <laughs> I can't have someone take their life over stupid, meaningless stuff. And I do understand that if the bailiffs are coming, it's because you owe someone money. And if you owe someone money, that's their business that you're destroying if they lent you money or something like that. So it's, again, you've got to understand the way of the system is people want their money back because you borrowed it. And if you don't give it back, you start destroying their lives. So that's about the system, right? So you start destroying their lives and then you're taking food from their table. So it has to be about quality in this life, equality in this life. If people are mean and bullying, it's not acceptable not even cyberbullying, and you will find you will have a lot of that when you do mental health and then you've got to look at it you are there to teach them so you mustn't retaliate in a way of naming and shaming that's one lesson i learned the hard way because when i was a victim of crime what i used to do is put all my evidence on facebook and say look listen to me listen to me listen to me listen to me and what it's done is it shut me down because it didn't give the opposition an option to hear the side you only hear one side and it can be what is she talking about and you only take so much content out of it and make judgment so people need to know the full story before they pass judgment don't they so this is the full story of me and i'm going to wrap a cigarette um the full story of me and i'm, I'm going to leave it with you hello i'll be down in a minute just on the phone <laughs> um, I, all right my love sometimes people want support sometimes people need task setting and um about myself i was just a child that didn't have a chance to grow thrown around throughout the system if i look at my my parents history i think they were just children themselves that had children again the system failed them didn't give them the help that i provide to this day and that is to make sure that i recognize the problems and behaviors that people are having and ask them to change it but people always when they're going to the mental health services to say please help me this voice over here says you're worthless, you don't deserve to be here. And you know what, we punish, we self-punish and we look for every, every excuse under the sun to listen to this one and says, yep, even your kids don't like you. Look what you've done to them, you made them cry. And we'll look for every excuse talking to that. And then we'll go over here, yeah, but you've got that boy saying, yeah, just, and it's finding reasons of what and how you can do this and how you can do that. And then suddenly the phone will ring. Hmm. <laughs> and that, that can be somebody is watching over you, sending you a message. Those messages of uh, somebody is listening are there. You just don't see them. But to recognise that if you're stopped in your tracks because you've had a phone call or somebody's put a nice message in your box, know that somebody somebody is looking over you and that is your warning someone's listening so if people are 
sending you messages in your inbox of encouragement, please do encourage them back. Do everything possible because nobody likes rejection. We hate it. And we will have to watch our words and explain the meanings. I could have turned around and just left a message and not explained anything this morning and said, what do you think you're doing? And that would have hurt somebody the other end receiving such a message like that because it's demoralizing, not giving them an opportunity to put things right or to correct or understand what. If you're gonna be in my circle, then we have to have an understanding. I don't want to just be a text. I don't want to just be something you can just post on. I like to have a conversation. I like to network, join in, be in group conversations. Um, I have Zoom every single Wednesday is open talk therapy. I am trained, although I didn't need much training, did I? Because a lived experience is a good experience. But you do have to when people question you, <laughs> when the people that haven't had a lived experience question you, are you qualified? I find that a kick in the teeth. Of course we're qualified. We've lived it. How do you save someone from suicide? Or how do you get someone? Let's have a look. You have AA. And AA will teach you how to stop drinking or to replace it. Counselling, sort of. Because he was once an alcoholic. You have mm, domestic violence. They will counsel you and teach you because they were once that victim of domestic violence. And then you have mental health. And some of them have not even had a lived experience. They have been brought up with silver spoons in their mouth and they don't know what it's like to be injured. And then suddenly they're reading out of these textbooks. And I know these textbooks because I too have on, been on training and watched some of those textbooks. And some of those textbooks have just passed on and they've taken a little bit of this and a little bit of that and said, I know, I'm going to do this. And I'm, I'm going to start running a, a mental health. And they have no idea how to deal with those anxieties and panic attacks and those, those, all those aftermaths of flashbacks and all of those things that we go through. None. So they play with our lives. So they network. Oh yeah, they do. And they offload. And when they offload, they go, I put you over here. You need some therapy? Okay, you're speaking to me about your problem. Okay, I tell you what. Okay. Oh, you've been raped? Oh, I know. We will send you over here to speak to the rape team. That's what they do. Oh, the domestic violence? Oh, we will send you over here to speak to them. Oh. What? Oh. But that's only in the media. It doesn't help me pick up the aftermath. It doesn't help me get my self-esteem back. None of it. And then you've got these people that network. And it is what they do. They have to network. And I'm in business myself. But I, you know, the thing is, the only time I network is with my clients. And I say to them, my client's suffering. This is the law. And you're breaking it. And I get my client's voice heard. But when I was a client and I was suffering, <laughs> they left me to suffer. For they shuffled paper amongst themselves. And it went on for months and months and months whilst I was a victim of being. And I can't, this is my last trauma that has given me PST, PTSD. So you see, um, I think. When you are a worker, thank you. When you are a worker, we, and you've had a lived experience, you will put that empathy into that person. You will put that compassion into your, that person. But I know some things they go on for so long, you just think, oh God, I just want my life back. You know, but you realize at the end of the day, so do they. So you, you put that compassion into these people. I mean, I've seen agencies support workers with my own clients and mental health, not actually checking on my own client. Now, they decided to have two mental healths. One is the MOM project, Mind Over Matter support, which gives 24 hours, seven days a week support. And there is always someone there to talk to. And they're lived, experienced people. 
And I don't want people that are unqualified in my team who don't get it. You don't get the compassion, don't get the empathy, you can't stay. I need people with a lived experience because they know what it's like to not hurt someone. But sometimes though, some people that, even though they had a lived experience and they say, I wanna help, I wanna help, they're not quite ready. Because when they keep letting go of the people that they are responsible for to say that I wanna help and they get in that circle, sometimes they let go of their hand, which can do more damage, more damage than good it finds it as rejection. I've said it to my own teammates before. I'm a human being, so take away the company. I'm still a human being that's just living alongside, having to recover and rediscover my identity, which was stripped of me for years. I think, like I said, this is coming up to my third year of freedom. I mean, in, in the process of freedom away from abuse, that means I'm in control of my surroundings, etc. But the boost, the only boost that I have had in the last three years has been online. Online trolling, online people that want to befriend you with mental health. Now, this is a, a very key thing that I'm going to tell you when you're doing a group. People that want to befriend you with mental health, some of those people are groomers. Children, child groomers. And they're looking for help, but they're not going to tell you that. They're going to put out their story and they're going to turn around and dote on children and this, that and the other and, and talk about a certain children, the individual, that children are not even theirs. But deep down they've done something where that child has been removed. So you'll find that. It's, it's funny, but I have, since doing this line of business, I have expose the hand of many groomers people that are in the a corner uh, I don't want to call corners out in corners to cause trouble to cause a divide and actually literally are just planted there on your Facebook to off balance you and victimize you in a way and if you bite you fall into that trap don't bite when it comes to these groups and different groups and people that want to befriend you but you've got to be careful because your groups will contain vulnerable people and we all know that when you're vulnerable you are more likely and susceptible to be taken advantage of because you ain't quite mentally got it together yet you're still trying to find your self-esteem and people know that and they will befriend you so you just have to be very careful i worked on an agency for five years is that just UK as I added people non UK I work wide world I'm all over the world I am all over I've done my analytics I've done my statistics I am all over the world I speak to people in Jamaica Bermuda uh, Canada I talk to people wherever they are in the world Ireland Scotland all of those things I have done those things many people say yeah your tactics you're not professional you swear and I'll say kiss my backside because Take the word professional off. The professional side of it is it takes one who has lived it. That's what makes it professional. And that's where I was going with that conversation. Qualification of somebody doing suicide prevention, isn't that, shouldn't be, shouldn't that only be somebody that's actually committed suicide? Okay, okay. We're not talking about the people that are left behind and the grief and the people that are affected by it, because I think we all get affected by people that commit suicide or try to harm themselves. But how can you be qualified to assess or understand somebody that actually has gone that deep to do that? Somebody says, and the mental health team is funny, my, one of my guys, he really fights against the mental health services. <laughs> and um, the support and thing, yeah. I'm good for a conversation. I should have just done a group to get to know you. So um, I will do those groups to get to know you. Please, let's all be in this together. Um, but some of these people that are in support services, they just don't get it. They don't get it. They, they play with our emotions and leave us. And you've got the wonderful people. If you get a great CPN or something like that, that's probably because they've had some kind of a lived experience and they'll probably give you a bit of personal background about them. You know, it, it trust is everything when you're dealing with people. Trust. Trust is everything. And they can break your heart in a heartbeat, some of these support workers. Some of these, um, it's, 
I've had some nice ones, but they just don't, they're just not there constantly. And I think when you suffer from mental health and it's a long-term illness, then that's why I provided the Mom Project, which is a long-term service. That means it's open to everybody to play their part in building everybody up. But it is a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week service that there's always someone there. And speak the bailiffs, as I said, I'm not having people taking their lives over the bailiffs and things, but remember, if you owe people money, then you have to give them back their money because it's their business. And when you start messing with people's business, you affect their state of mind also. Um, right? Let's have a look. Add people from everywhere, hun. Worldwide, we all suffer, as Kerry is saying in it. I'm on the Mom Project, and I'm sticking with my own platform. I'm here to put a bit of what you want to do because you've got to make your platform work for you. I had to go out there and do a business and and learn the business aspect of it um, and then get the insurance and all of those things to become a, a company. And, and, I, and I thought to myself in lockdown, when I just got here, um, like I said, I just got here in rebranding myself and finding my identity and what I find enjoyable. And then the lockdown come, but I, I don't actually know what's going on around the world right now. I'm just getting on with my life. And I was doing weekly workshops, um, helping people with their mental health, giving them therapy every single week. Um, I love that. I love that. They were looking at me. Me? Well, I'm still a nut nut. And I, I don't, I tell you what, my self-harm, physical self-harm, that ceased. I ceased for a while. I, I've been clean. <laughs> Isn't it? You talk about the AA in their bottles. I'll say, from the, free from the self-harm on the physical side of it, I've been clean. <laughs> Why don't we get recognition for that? <laughs> we shouldn't self-mutilate because all of those scars that we have, all of those scars remind us of all those nasty perpetrators. And all those times and all those incidents. So when you want to wear that beautiful wedding dress or a nice dress like a hot day right now, people look at your arms and they turn around and go, what have you done? Or they don't say nothing. And when they say something, particularly children, but let's go for the adults. When they say something, they look at me, you don't need to do that. You don't need to say that. <laughs> you need to it's too late. But I get it. But... Um, I get it. No, we don't need to do that. We need to find a better way to communicate. We have to find a better way to communicate. Mental health isn't just one place. It's right across the world. Because it's not the mental health. It's the home situations. It's the lifestyles. So it's not the mental health. It's the lifestyles that create the mental health and the mental instability. It's them interactions that you have with people that cause the mental instability in the first place. We weren't born with mental health, my love. We weren't born with these, these fear, the fear that we have, the anxiety. And that fear causes people's aggression and anger and everything else that comes with it. We weren't born with it. We learned it. We learned how to be selfish. We learned how to share. We learned rejection. And we learned that in the playground. When they were picking teams of netball or football and you were the last one to be called because you just seemed to be the only one left. We learned all of this rejection from a very early age. But a lot of us have found a way to internally damage ourselves with that rejection. Um, and that the more rejection over and over again that we have throughout the years um, does so much damage if we can't find a way to offload and communicate throughout. Yeah. Okay, work just before unique. Ooh, unique. I love the name. That's what everybody should be, is unique. And they are. We just need to find the value in people. Um, I was coming out of care work just before the lockdown, hun. Was going into the music and hairdressing lockdown come in and I had to cut care off ASAP because of the risk of infection. Because of no PPE. 
tough one, isn't it? It's decisions, isn't it? And there's me thinking, I'm not. This is not no judgment on you. No judgment on you whatsoever. Um, if it's your own business, you're gonna do what it takes. If it's somebody else's business, then they have to do what it takes, and that ownership is on them. But when we go into a business, that that responsibility that we had, and that when we can't no longer help these people, we feel a sense of guilt. Um, and it's hard, isn't it? It's hard to sit back and watch someone suffer when we could be playing a part of their happiness right to the end. It's very difficult. Um, I think for me, I've had to advise people, um, my advice, um, and I'm taking it from the government, uh, but I have my own advice from my, my team, um, is that when during the lockdown there was some domestic violence going on and the government says, well, if you need to run to a friend, go to a friend. They'd rather you be safe that way. And that's what I said exactly when uh, one of my, uh, what some, when when some, a member was crumbling about not seeing their um, family and they, they said it's affecting their mental health, they, to the point where they didn't want to be here anymore. It, it, it's to the point where, well, life and death situation, you need to go and see your family. It's very simple. Do it, providing your family accepts that. And if your family doesn't, that's a responsibility. And they have to live with the consequences like that, don't they? They have to. I, I couldn't imagine just leaving my mum dying on her own. Although I've carried my mum in her arms and put her on a bed and watched my mum's life end before my eyes. And um, when I take the word mum away, I look at that, her name was Janet, and I look at her and I look at me, who is a mum, and I look at Kerry for what I see in all of my mum's journey and my father's journey and my journey is I see that in a child that was just wanted to have fun and those funds came with a consequences of, um, they come with real big consequences when you're drinking. And um, when you take the eye off your children, when you take the eye off your children because you're too busy in your own world, your children are being damaged. Uh, I was being completely damaged because my mum was in the bottle. So, taking the eye off the ball, having no one to talk to, the babysitter got his way, if you know what I mean. So anyway, coming away from all of that, mastering through my life and all my trials and tribulations, I am simply saying, well done to you, speaking out. I hope I've given you quite a few tips and tools today for someone today to monitor your own well-being when you're in a, in a position where you're wanting to help other people to look after your own mental health because you will crumble it you will crumble with these rejections sometimes it's something you will master um and then in the end you'll claim your spot and you'll say you know what none of that matters it matters if i help one person but the thing is that one person is me i help myself by talking like you've helped yourself, Lisa, by talking. So, Barbara, the mum of Barbara, I want to say, if my mum was here right now, she'd be with me to support me as you are, your daughter, and your daughter is you too. It takes one to know one, right? So, um, thank you. If you want to pop on my group, because this one's still building, so uh, it's there, the Mom Project, uh, Mental Health Awareness, Real Talk. It's there, it's still building, pop there. Try and have your own ideas that you put in there rather than share from other people's groups and other posts and stuff. Try and put a piece of you into it and I will do my best to put a bit of me in here, okay? Uh, and you, and the thing is, the thing about carers, Barbara, I don't know your history, but I, I don't know. I, I'm going to look at your daughter, then I'm going to look at you, and I'm going to relate something in there, within that. And I'm going to think there is a, a part here. We all play a part here. And I think when I look at you as a carer, most of us that have been injured, have you noticed the amount of carers we have become? We end up being carers. I was a carer. And 
You get so attached. You pull you all in, and then suddenly the system says, or the agency says, oh, no, you can only spend um, such and such a time now. Just, just, just quick, get in there and get out. And I'm like, yeah, but these people, they haven't seen anybody all week. They need to talk, you know? So, um, yeah, I think you, you know, I touch upon parents' responsibilities, even my own. I'm a parent, as I said, three, three men now and grandchildren. And I think I had a responsibility to owe it to my children to tell them the truth about my ordeal so they understand. It doesn't mean that just because I tell them it's going to be fixed. No, I'm still living through trauma of all of that abuse um the flashbacks um i master through those flashbacks i can dis i've learned to disassociate many of us do that don't we we've learned that for a long while before it all comes flooding out but to disassociate uh in the best way we possibly can through those uh traumas when we're in relationships especially when your relationships go and tits up um and you used your body as a weapon to sleep with somebody uh just to think we'll get back together <laughs> this makes you feel 10 times as crap when it didn't go the way you planned. So sometimes self-esteem, self-worth, we have to find our identity. So uh, yeah, I'm just, I love what I do. Do you know what? I'm actually gonna put it on here. I don't mind saying this. I had, um, when I was doing what I was doing, oh, we wanna see if we can network with you. You mean you have got too many clients and you want me to have some of your clients. Except for you don't like the way that I deal with your clients uh, deal with clients because i'm ruthless <laughs> we don't want pussy floating around we don't it doesn't work for us oh yeah we might say <laughs> we might go <gasps> then you don't got mental health you're affecting me but deep down in here you freaking well know it's the truth that you needed to hear so yes we rebel in our own little right minds but this service that wanted to work with me was mind and I was appalled. It was mind. Yeah, a service that I was once under. So I thought literally they were trying to manipulate my mind when they arranged an appointment to meet me. Um, it was like an interview. So I got all ready, took me two, two days to get ready for an interview. Two days, the anxiety levels went up. Because remember, just because I'm in a position, it doesn't mean I'm not in recovery. I'm in recovery every single day. So, <laughs> it took we um had the person to meet me and i waited and waited and waited and they didn't show up and they were from an organization called mind and out of that situation when they didn't show up when i mustered up all the anxiety to know that i needed to speak to these these people oh my god these position in power i forgot myself for five minutes so am i so i was meeting like-minded but only on this occasion when I met the person, no, didn't meet them, sorry. When I asked the person when he wanted to interview me and offload some of his clients to me, I asked directly, have you a lived experience? No. And do you know what? That appointment that he made to uh, meet me, he didn't show up. How do you think that made me feel when an agency of mental health decides that it would want to meet you and they're a popular one? and they don't show up. How do you think that made me feel? I laughed. I absolutely turned it around for my good and I laughed. And I said to myself, all of those agencies and all of those mental health services and, and the police and the council that failed me and the system failed me where, yes, darling, I got compensation from them. And yes, I got my sorry letters from them for leaving vulnerable people to suffer the way I suffered. And not because of mental health. We're talking about being a victim of crime and abuse. Now, when you utilise these services and you encounter them again, when you're in a position and you become a company where you think you need to network with them. I don't need to network with them. I realise, what I realised is that the same as them, the same as me, is my idea. The same as Lisa, the same as me. We have ideas. And it's teamwork for the people. People. Well, this person stood me up and did not think about me or the people that I work 
for or help. And why they didn't think about that is because I told them, and they already knew that I had a lived experience. They already knew that I suffered emotionally unstable. And I like things to be stable. And I like things to be right. And I don't like to be messed about or lied to. They knew all of that. And they didn't show up. So what they did was try to play with my mind. But I took ownership of that situation, which at the time, I laughed. I laughed at it. Instead of crying and ranting and raving and naming and shaming them all over the place, by their name, not by the company, you know, um, then I didn't do that this time. I stood up in my t-shirt, which I have plenty of those, uh, by the way, and I said, this is why I'm called mind over matter, you know, so matter or matter over the mind, should I say, because they just stood me up and, and I thought, wow, you're a mental health service and you're supposed to be helping the people and you do this to people's state of mind. When I phoned up, rather than accuse, I said to them, are you okay? Is, um, is your car running okay? Because only I'm here waiting for you and I've been waiting for 25 minutes. Just checking, are you still coming? And do you know what that service said? Oh, I forgot, I forgot. You're in a position to help people, you don't forget on people when people are waiting for you because the anxiety levels are getting prepped, are there. You just have to have some consideration and some respect. And that goes for everyone. Consideration, respect, to think about their individuals, you don't own anyone, whether they're aunties, uncles, daughters, sons, you don't own them, they're here for to do, do something in life. It's about respect and good communication. Take care. Thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. My name is Kerry Mussington. And I want you to remember my name. Because I'm a survivor. And this is my voice.